Welcome back students. Uh, this module is on transcriptional regulation, in particular transcriptional activators and repressors. There'll be another module on the tryptophan opron, yet another module on the lac opron, and then a further module on eukaryotic gene regulation. In an effort to help us understand the section of this chapter 8, I have borrowed this figure from chapter 9. So here we have a typical interpretation of what so far the students imagine a gene to be. A gene is a region of a chromosome which codes for something. In prokaryotes, this region will be collinear with the messenger RNA made from it. In eukaryotes, this region here would contain introns and exons. What we would like you to do is to change your perspective on a gene from this type of layout to one that looks more like this. So here we have the gene once again producing messenger RNA, but this time there is a switch, a regulatory piece of information called regulatory DNA located close to that gene. So normally, normally, one gene is controlled by one switch, and this switch can decide if this gene should be silent, that is turned off, or active, that is turned on. But not only that, like a light switch, it acts as a dimmer switch, where it, the gene can be turned on by various percentages. The gene could be active at 100%, or it could be active at 40%, or 30%, or even a couple of percent. So that is the new paradigm on how you should be thinking of genes. And this entire chapter is focusing on the regulatory DNA of various examples of how genes are controlled in real life situations. In order to maximize the learning, students must understand the difference between proteins referred to as repressors and other proteins referred to as activators. So let's look at repressors first. Repressors, when present on the DNA, have a habit of reducing the amount of gene expression taking place. That means that they reduce the rate at which RNA polymerase is actually transcribing a particular gene. For instance, if the gene in question was working at 80% before the repressor arrived, the gene may now be working at 30% or 10%, and in some cases, the gene may not be working at all, that is 0%. So repressors either eliminate gene expression, or they reduce it from the current level to a new lower level, that is, that they repress the gene expression at that location. So in the same vein, activators are substances, proteins, which activate and increase the rate at which transcription occurs at that particular location. So when these proteins are present, the rate of gene expression is increased. So if the current rate is 0%, the new rate may be 50%. If the current rate is 30%, new rate may be 100%. So in line with our analogy of a dimmer switch, repressors reduce the lighting in the room by lowering the dimmer switch. Activators increase the lighting in the room by increasing the electricity and increasing the lighting. Bringing in this slide from a different source, we can see that these interactions normally take place between activators and repressors at or around the promoter of the gene. Remember the promoter region is the region of the DNA to which the protein RNA polymerase binds in order to initiate transcription. Please note that the word activators is sometimes replaced by the word enhances. So the two terms are synonymous or equivalent. A great way to relate to how repressors and activators work is to look at some examples. So the first example we'll look at today is that of the tryptophan opron. The tryptophan opron is a set of genes, all controlled by one switch. There are actually five genes, 
all controlled by a single promoter. The organization of the tryptophan opron then graphically looks like this. So here we have the five genes labeled backwards from E, D, C, B, and A. And the, here is the switch which controls the functionality of all five of these genes simultaneously. The product, by the way, is a single messenger RNA molecule. A single messenger RNA molecule. This is unlike something that you have seen before so far. Each of these regions of the messenger RNA is then attached to by ribosomes and then translated into five different proteins in total. So all five genes are made in the same ratio because they're made from the same RNA molecule. But that aside, let's concentrate here at the switch. So the promoter region contains another region of DNA called the operator, indicated in this figure in green. The two yellow boxes that you see are where the RNA polymerase would bind. So looking at this from a purely neutral perspective, it's apparent that either the RNA polymerase can bind or something else can bind, but not both simultaneously. Expanding the previous slide to show this more detailed slide, we can see that the promoter region is located here ahead of the genes themselves. The transcription of the genes begins by RNA polymerase at the plus one site. So this is where the first part of the messenger RNA would be encoded and subsequently made. The switch itself consists, as we said earlier, of two very important regions that can be occupied by proteins of one type or the other, but never both at the same time. So in this case here, the two proteins that are competing against each other happen to be the RNA polymerase and another protein called the tryptophan repressor. The RNA polymerase in this figure is shown as this large light blue protein complex and the repressor protein is shown in this figure as a dark green structure. If you look at the figure as it goes down, it says when tryptophan levels are low, and we'll discuss this in the tryptophan module, then the green repressor protein is not sitting on the DNA at the operator site. So there is nothing on the DNA to block the fixation of RNA polymerase. So RNA polymerase has a free ride in attaching to this region of the promoter for the tryptophan opron. And then transcription will begin because there's nothing blocking the polymerase. In another situation, when tryptophan levels are quite high inside a cell, you will find that the dark green protein, the repressor, is actually sitting on the DNA already when the RNA polymerase arrives. So the RNA polymerase is not strong enough in this case to dislodge the repressor protein, and it's the RNA polymerase itself which is unable then to take a foothold at the promoter sequence. So if the RNA polymerase cannot bind to the promoter, then there will be no copying of the DNA into RNA, i.e. no transcription, and basically none of the genes will be produced from this operon. So in its most distilled version, we can say that a repressor will reduce the production of messenger RNA. One more time, a repressor is anything that reduces the amount of messenger RNA by reducing or eliminating transcription. So in this case, the dark green molecule is a very effective repressor because it completely eliminates any transcription that could have taken place at this location. In the same vein, now let's look at what happens with activators. So here we have a slide which shows the similar setup. The DNA molecule is in the background 
and the RNA polymerase, the light blue, is positioned on the surface of the promoter. But you see this dark blue molecule, and the dark blue molecule is aiding or helping bring in RNA polymerase. So it increases the rate at which transcription takes place. So one more time, activators are called activators because they increase the rate of transcription compared to other circumstances. So an important deduction that is being made underlying all this information is that RNA polymerase itself is a pretty weak initiator of transcription. RNA polymerase by itself does not do a good job in finding the promoter, sitting down on the promoter, and then initiating DNA transcription into messenger RNA. It needs the help in many, many cases of other proteins which are called activators. So here the activator would increase the rate of production probably of this gene up close towards 100%. But if the activator was missing the dark blue molecule and the light blue molecule had to find and bind to the promoter itself, the rate of transcription would be very low, maybe 5%, 6%. One last way to interpret what's going on here is with this slide. If we just focus on the left-hand panel, we can see that the two DNA segments are equivalent, they're the same, except that the top one has a protein sitting on the DNA region that's colored brown. So in this case, if the RNA polymerase was present, the transcription of the gene would be up close to a high percentage. But when the activator molecule is missing, the same piece of DNA basically has no transcription or very low levels of transcription. So the presence, the presence of the brown molecule, the activator, increases gene transcription. Therefore, that is considered a positive thing when it comes to measuring transcription. So that is called positive regulation of gene transcription with the help of the activator. So the binding of something at that location gets transcription increased. On the contrary, other proteins, which can sit down on DNA at other locations, blocking transcription are called repressors. We just learned that earlier in this module. So from the same perspective as the left-hand side, the right-hand side says, if the same piece of DNA has bound a repressor compared to when it doesn't bind a repressor, the rate of transcription drops. So repressors reduce the rate of transcription from something high down to something low or even zero. So here the binding of a repressor causes transcription to be degraded. So something has to be removed in order to get transcription activated. So this is called negative regulation, where something must be removed from the path taken by the RNA polymerase when traveling along the DNA. So this is like an obstacle that's in the path of the RNA polymerase. Whereas the activator is a helper which pushes the RNA polymerase and encourages it to do its job. So these analogies are very important. Lastly, we need to focus on these accessory proteins, the activators and the repressors. So in this figure here, the top panel shows us the brown protein, and the brown protein is an activator. It helps the rate of transcription to be increased. So how does that protein know when to help and when not to help? Well, the shape of the protein is the most important thing. That protein will then interact with something else, its ligand, and that will decide what shape the protein takes up. So in this particular example, in this particular example, the brown protein alone doesn't have the necessary shape at the DNA binding site in order to bind to DNA sequence at the switch. 
So this protein will be found unbound to that DNA. Therefore, the rate of transcription alone would be low by RNA polymerase. If we move over to the right-hand side, we see that the presence of a ligand, the substrate to which the protein binds, causes the protein to change its shape. So this allosteric effect can be seen here. So if you're not sure what allosteric means, you need to go back and look in chapter 4. So the binding of the red molecule causes a change in the shape of the overall protein. Now for the first time, it can recognize its target sequence on the DNA and attach to that region using non-covalent bonding, hydrogen bonds, van der Waals forces, etc. So now the binding of the activator encourages the binding of RNA polymerase and the rate of transcription is increased. Contrary, we see how repressors work here. So the repressor by itself is normally able to have a complementary shape to the region of DNA that it likes to bind to. So alone, the, alone the protein is able to bind to the operator. The protein changes shape when it binds its ligand. So this ligand is probably different to this ligand. But in this case, the binding of a ligand to its active site causes an allosteric effect on the protein, causing it to change shape. Therefore, its other DNA binding site is interrupted. It can no longer stay bound to the DNA, and it falls off the DNA. And now the blockage of the RNA polymerase has been removed, and transcription can continue. Once you have mastered these concepts presented in this module, then we recommend that you view the modules on tryptophan operons and on the LAC operon, and also the modules on eukaryotic gene expression. Thank you so much.